Hello hackers, it's Andy here. Now I want to make a quick update video about the state of the hack project because I think it has reached a milestone that I should make a video about. So as you can see, this is the sketchmatic of the hack project right here. I have divided down to four different parts. This is the CPU, this is IO, and this is protection, which does all the protected mode stuff. And this is memory, which contains not only the memory chips themselves, but also the memory paging circuit. So we can go into one of them and have a look. So this is the CPU part of the circuit. As you can see, a large chunk of it is occupied by this circuit, which is entirely optional. This circuit allows the hack to display some kind of postcode during the boot process and it uses nothing but the CPU itself, a latch register and a decoder. Now remember, the hack is a new design. It's not like the Commander X16 which is based on the VIC-20. So any part of the circuit can go terribly wrong. Therefore, having a debug circuit that relies on as little component working as possible is good for the future development of the project. And next, let's look at protection. This part does not contain a lot of gates, but it is actually the most complex part to design because there are tons of edge cases, race conditions, and just general bugs to avoid. Take the protection fault as an example. The hack can generate a fault on an instruction fetch on non-data pages. It can also generate a fault during a write to a non-writable page. A read on a non-readable page, for example pages that contain sensitive system information, and it will generate a protection fault if a user program tries to access an external I.O. device directly. This is the I.O. protection fault that everyone knows and loves. If you pay close attention to them, you will find that Although all four fault generation circuit involves a 74LS74 D flip-flop with some external circuit, no two fault generation circuit are alike. Despite you may think about that while well, they are generating fault on similar conditions. And that is due to the difference in the timing of the Z80 for different types of memory access. One lesson I learned when designing the hack is that the devil is in the timing. It is always in the timing. A similar story also happens to this circuit which generates the sys signal which indicates whether the motherboard is in a user mode or a system or kernel mode. But I will leave the story of this circuit to another video because it's way beyond what I can cover in this quick and short video. Next, let's look at memory. You have your main memory chips here and the paging memory chips here. And finally, on the bottom right, you have a simple data latch, which selects the process ID while generating a SysGate signal. That signal basically means whether that application can enter SysMo with a restart instruction. And this is used to emulate system that uses the restart instruction for other purposes. And finally, let's look at I.O. Every logic gate you are seeing here is revision 2 or 3. And some of them are revision 4 or 5. Because some of the logic here are really nasty and hard to get right. The expansion bus on the hack is a core part of the entire design. I can easily make a half an hour long video just explaining every signal on this bus, why they are there, and why many of the signals commonly found on other buses for other Z80 machines are not here. Another challenge for this circuit is actually this part, which generates the wait state for the I.O. devices. The challenge here is that the hack is clocked really high. I'm targeting at 16 megahertz and it may go even as high as 20 megahertz. The dip switch here is used to select between 1 to 16 wait states. This is a feature exclusive to the development version of the board. It will allow the developers to kind of squeeze the timing of their card to test out exactly how fast their peripherals can go. This, with a ton of other features, can really help developers develop hardware and software for the hack. Now, if you don't understand any of this, it's fine. The takeaway is the circuit design is complete and the sketchmatic is 
basically down. There are some minor touch-ups, some signal needs connecting. I will add a keyboard controller, but that's basically it. But on the PCB side, it's a different story. Yeah, the PCB is not complete as you can see. And that's because I have to confess, although I have designed projects in KiCad before, I had really little experience in doing so. And placing and routing a deeply entangled system like the hack is kind of a nightmare for me. And I've been grinding almost non-stop to get the Sketchmatic to its finish line. Things like the protection circuit, it has been changed numerous times, sometimes entirely overhauled, just because a new timing edge case is found. And to be honest, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit tired. So I'm announcing that I'm taking a small break from this project. Don't worry, the project is still going. You just won't be seeing like two or three commits every day for the following week. And I think I can really use some help from the community here. If you have experience in designing retro related or just any kind of PCB circuit in KiCad and you want to help, please leave a comment in the comment section below. You can contact me via Patreon and you can join our Discord server using the link in the description below. But I think that's it for this update. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.